everybody. Good evening. This is Ashley from Written in Ash. And I'm currently working on another story right now that I already wrote, but I'm making a video for it, which is takes quite a while <clears throat> to do the video. So um, I'm pretty much almost done with that, though. Um, because I'm not adding as many like sound effects and stuff. Um, I will probably be more in the other videos because it takes a lot of a long time to do all that and make sure it lines up right and everything. Uh, for the most part. <laughs> um, but anyways, and I have ideas for more stories. So for now, there's only going to be two. So until then, I'm going to be probably trying to read ghost story books like I did before once. I'm going to make a playlist because I have some like this one, Tales for the Midnight Hours, a classic. My parents always read this to me and my sisters growing up, especially uh, these two, the furry collar and the black velvet ribbon. And uh, yeah, those are the two best ones. I already read the furry collar one, so now I'm going to be reading the black velvet ribbon. Which I've seen memes and stuff like this uh, about this story, similar. Um, on Facebook, but it was like ribbon was red instead of black or green, I think it was. But like, yeah, basically the same thing, just a little different, but same gist. Anyways, so if it sounds familiar, that's why. It's from Tales for the Midnight Hour, Stories of Horror by J.B. Stamper. Here we go. The Black Velvet Ribbon. There was one room in the house that the old man always kept locked. Things had not changed in that room for years. A soft layer of dust had settled on the furniture on the, and on the thing that lay on the floor beside the bed. The old man had been a bachelor most of his life. When he was 40 years old, he had met her, the girl with the black velvet ribbon. She was beautiful in a strange, mysterious way. Her hair and her deep, bottomless eyes were as black as the velvet ribbon around her neck. He planned to marry her before the next full moon rose in the autumn sky. On their wedding day, he watched her walk toward him up the long aisle. She was dressed in a white gown, a white veil, and carried a bouquet of white flowers. Even her face was ivory white, but below it, around the ivory neck, was the black velvet ribbon. He remembered staring at that ribbon as the strains of the wedding march brought his bride nearer to him. He remembered the curious and shocked looks on the faces of the wedding guests. But then his eyes met hers, and he was drowning in the bottom of stones. He didn't think of the velvet ribbon during the rest of the wedding day. It was a joyous time, and if people thought his wife a bit strange, they kept it to themselves. That night, when they were alone, he saw that the ribbon was still there, still circling her lovely neck. Will you ever take that ribbon from around your neck? he asked, hoping his question was a needless one. I'd be sorry if I do. His wife answered, so I won't. Her answer disturbed him, but he did not question her further. There was plenty of time for her to change her ways. Their life together fell into a pleasant pattern. They were happy, as most newly married couples are. He found her to be a perfect wife, well, nearly perfect. Although she had a great number of dresses and wore a different one every day, she never changed the black velvet ribbon. This ribbon began to be the test of their marriage. When he looked at her, his eyes would inevitably fall to her neck. When he kissed her, he could feel the ribbon tightening around his own throat. <clears> throat> you please take that ribbon from around her neck, he asked her time and time again. You'll be sorry if I do, so I won't. This was always her answer. At first it teased him, then it began to grate on his nerves. Now it was beginning to infuriate him. You'll be sorry if I do. You'll be sorry if I do. One day he tried to pull the ribbon off after she had repeated her answer with like a mechanical doubt. It wouldn't come loose from her neck, he realized then. For the first time that the ribbon had no beginning and no end, it circled her neck like a band of steel. He had drawn back from her in disgust that day. Things weren't the same with them after that. At the breakfast table, the black ribbon seemed to mock him as he drank his suddenly bitter coffee. In the afternoon outside, the ribbon made a funeral out of the sunlight, but it was at night that the ribbon bothered him most. He knew he could live with it no longer. Either take that ribbon off or I will, he said in the night to his wife of only four weeks. 
He'll be sorry if I do, so I won't, she smiled at him, and then she fell off to sleep. But he did not sleep. He lay there staring at the painted ribbon. He meant what he said. If she would not take off the ribbon, he would. As she lay sleeping and unsuspecting, he crept out of bed and over to her sewing box. He had seen a small, sharp scissors she had kept there. It was thin enough, he knew, to slip between the velvet ribbon and her soft neck. Gripping scissors in his trembling hands, he walked softly back to the bed. He came up to where she lay and stood over her. Her head was thrown back on the pillow and her throat, with the black velvet ribbon around it, rose ever so slightly with her breathing. He bent down with one swift movement. He forced the thin blade of the scissors under the ribbon. Then with a quick, triumphant snip, he severed the ribbon that had come between them. The black velvet ribbon fell away from his wife's neck. Her head rolled off the bed and onto the floor. She was muttering, You'll be sorry. You'll be sorry. The end. Hello again, everyone. Uh, thanks for listening. Um, I'll probably be uh, reading another story tomorrow night, uploading one, so stay tuned for that. Until then, check out my other videos, and uh, you know I'll be working at my stories that I wrote myself to make more of them, so stay tuned. Don't be scared. Like, subscribe, share.